left the tables bare in all of France, who set the hearts of the ladies fair aflame, who set the lords of royal courts to dance. Wow. That may, may be a to be or not to be to my book. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have to say who left in France. Well, I'm blaming the English, because English always take everything from France. So with that, I would say it was an English invasion. And of course, they're all dancing, because now everything's eaten, drank, and they took all the ladies. <laughs> And maybe a few Spaniards, I know a couple here. <laughs> That's right. Yes, yes, the Spaniards were, they were happily reveling and, and enjoying all the spoils of their, war, of their war when all of a sudden there came a knock at the door. <laughs> Guinness! No answer. None at all. So, one brave Spaniard and an Englishman went to the door to answer, only to find... Gargoyle. <laughs> Dressed in plaid. <laughs> it was a Scottish gargoyle. Of course. <laughs> and he had cups of plenty and a keg of wine to join in, in the revel. And he danced through the night. Uh, and the French, of course, this was all happening in France, keep in mind. Of course. The French were very confused as to why there was a Scottish gargoyle dancing in France, as the Scottish typically don't like the English. And, as you may recall, the French would later become great friends with the Scottish on the basis that they both really hated the English. <coughs> and so the gargoyle decided to recruit the Spaniards to fight the English <laughs> as they are reveling. <laughs> and thus, the gargoyle led this mass attack upon the English, and the English were all crying out in fear, run away! And they ran, and they ran, and Gildenkrantz and Rosenstern, yeah, those two, were in the front, leading the retreat. And away they ran, but the gargoyle tripped them. And they fell. They fell. And they tripped the lovely ladies. Who shrieked. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Tripped the lovely ladies, right? Yes. Oh, golly. But the lovely lady slid for feet and feet. But the gargoyle helped them up while the French followed close behind. Right? The French are still here, correct? Oh, yes. Yeah. Presumably. <laughs> Except there's the gargoyle chasing the Frenchman. And the Spaniard way behind saying, It's been me! <laughs> So the Spaniard missed out on all the fun. <laughs> and the English, of course, ran screaming from the hall, taking all the food with them, leaving the tables bare. Bare as they could be. And the ladies, who were, we should remember, French, found their ways back home, quite safely, with tales of how horrid the English were. They don't bathe. <laughs> <laughs> they don't bathe. Well, something's foul in Denmark with that, because the Danish prince suddenly arrived. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> yes, Lord Hamlet, how good to see you here. <laughs> how is your father doing? Too <laughs> soon. <laughs> oh, it is well. It is well with my father. No, I have newts. No, I have gargoyle. Oh, but, but soft, lovely ladies. Let's go back. <laughs> So they chased after the lovely ladies, calling out, Jessica, Jessica, come back! <laughs> and, let's see, these were like French people? No, the Danish. <laughs> the, the Danish had a great desire to chase down all the French women, because we all know French women are much more desirable than the Great Danes. <laughs> His curt divine encouragements provoke such lusty thoughts and twists of heart in men. In women, it provokes merely derisive laughter. <laughs> <laughs> he, of course, being William Shakespeare, well-known merchant's son from the west of England. 
But of course, we all know a lot of piracy happened at wenching houses, <laughs> where Shakespeare would go there to get inspiration by dipping his waistcoat. <laughs> by which we mean to take a fishing rod, catch a worm to the end of the line, and throw it into the water. We are saying this because it is definitely not a dick joke. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a fish joke either. <laughs> but he was mistaken in the thought that this would be a way to intent and try to entice the ladies because I have fish on a platter and I am a good provider. And that didn't work. And as he as he sat there fishing, he looked up and saw a sort of crude raft floating down the river Avon. That being of course where he lived. Um and on this raft, there was a young man, well-dressed, proclaiming things out loud as if there were people to hear him. It was clear from the start this man was mad. It was also clear from the start this man was Scottish, due to his accent. <laughs> which, considering he was in England, the two word things do mean the same thing. And the mad Scotsman proclaiming that he owned his island, which is, I don't know, it's supposed to be Ireland, but... <laughs> and there he was, the entire island on which he stood. I own this land, I am the king of this land. At least so the three witches told me. <laughs> <laughs> I am Newt, ton of lizard. Um, four foot of small hamster. <laughs> My mother does not smell elderberries, thank you much. But this is all he had to eat on his raft. <laughs> and so he ate the elderberries, and he threw the elderberries into the water, and he proclaimed his righteous wrath against all who would challenge his kingdom on which he stood. Unfortunately, because of his thick border accent, nobody could understand the word he was saying. And the finale? And hence, they let him float down and out into the English Channel, where eventually he ended up in France, where everybody just looked at him weird. <laughs> <laughs>